My next guest is an Iranian-Canadian politician from Ontario who gave a speech that went viral recently. Goldi Gamari spoke out about how her family escaped Iran after the Islamic Revolution, turned the country into an Islamist hellhole, particularly for women. Her family sought and were granted refuge in Canada, but in a speech that's been shared far and wide, particularly by members of the Jewish community, she spoke of how she's seeing signs of that ugly ideology she fled in the West, in Canada, where even before Israel's counter-offensive, crowds gathered to celebrate Hamas's horrific attack against Israeli civilians on October 7. Let's have a look. When my parents immigrated to Canada in 1986, I was a year old. And the reason that they immigrated to Canada from Iran is because uh, in 1979, there was um, an Islamic revolution and our once free and democratic country was taken over by radical Islamists, um, was taken over by terrorists, and was taken over by fascists. And we were blessed to be able to come to Canada to escape that hatred, to escape that radical, fundamentalist, Islamo-fascist ideology. And that's the same regime, Madam Speaker, that denies the Holocaust. That's the same regime that spreads anti-Semitic information and propaganda, not just inside the Islamic regime of Iran, but around the world and through its po proxies like Hamas and Hezbollah and others. And I happened to come across this pro-Hamas celebration, this pro-Hamas rally. It was the first time in my life that I had ever felt uncomfortable as a Canadian. The hate, the anger, the way they were marching, the chants they were making, that's something you see in the Islamic regime in Iran. You do not see that in Canada. That's the kind of behavior you see in, in radical fundamentalist countries, not in Canada. That is not the Canada that my parents immigrated to. That is not the Canada that we were raised in. Goldie Gamari joins me now. Goldie, has uh, Canada changed? Have you imported and fostered the same ideology your parents fled? Well, hi, Rita. Thank you so much for having me on, first of all, and thank you to everyone who's um, who's watching and listening. Um, so the Canada that my parents immigrated to in 1986, it, I feel like it's not the same Canada that we're witnessing today. Um, my parents came here to escape a radical Islamofascist ideology. They came here because they wanted to live in a free, democratic, and secular society. And growing up, we had no problem integrating into Canadian society. My parents embraced Canadian values. My parents embraced Canadian culture and secularism. And the, the Canadian idea, ideas and ideology and beliefs that we respect everyone, we um, uh, we're here to be Canadian first and foremost, and we are here because we want to be peaceful, and we want to live our lives free of government control. And it doesn't mean that you have to forget about your heritage or your language or your culture or your customs, but what it means is that you leave the hatred and the baggage of your home country behind, because we mm. come here to live in a peaceful, democratic society. Absolutely. And Goldie, we've seen these anti-Israeli rallies around Canada, around the Western world. We've seen uh, posters of kidnapped children torn down. And in Canada and elsewhere, we've seen the flag of Hamas's biggest backers, the Iranian regime, flying high. And this footage of uh, thousands of Muslims lining the streets of Toronto to pray together was highlighted by a, another MP, an Iranian-Belgian this time, Daria Safai, whose family, like yours and mine, escaped Iran. And she said what looks peaceful and innocent is, as she said, a political and social message. She called it a power display. And she also noted the strict gender apartheid that means there are no women among uh, that groups. What's your response to that? Is that something that should be concerning Canadians, these overt displays of, of people praying in the street? 100%. Absolutely. This should be very concerning. It is concerning to me. It is concerning to many 
Iranian Canadians. It is concerning to the Iranian diaspora around the world. Um, so we have been sharing footage of the protests within Iran. And one of the ways that the terrorist Islamic regime in Iran, this Islamo-fascist regime, responds to pro-democracy Iranians within Iran who are fighting for freedom and democracy is they will take over their spaces and they will pray in front of them. And for a lot of people, mm. they'll think, oh, well, they're praying, they'll, they're being peaceful. But it's not. This is a sign of conquest. This is a sign of power. And it is very concerning and it is very frightening to see these radical Islamofascist ideologies abusing the freedoms and the, the the charter, like within Canada, for example, the Charter of Rights and Freedoms, the, the Canadian Constitution, to um, say that, oh, what's the problem? We're just praying on the street. No, you're not praying on the street. You are participating in an unsanctioned rally. You are blocking traffic. You are taking over the streets. You are not allowing peaceful Canadians to just walk through and use public spaces. And you are using this as a tool of colonialization and, and conquer, conquering within this radical Islamofascist ideology. And the really frustrating part is that when the Iranian diaspora speaks out about this, we're accused of being Islamophobic, we're accused of mm. um, being racist, and it's not that at all. Like, this is the reality of Iranians. This is the literal reason why we came to Canada. It's to escape that terrorist flag you see right there, that Allah Akbar flag, which has nothing to do mm. with Iran. We fly the lion and sun flag. There's a reason that Iranian women were named, um, were, were given the, uh, you know, the Nobel Peace Prize. There's a reason that Iranian women were named the Time Hero of the Year. By, by, by Times Magazine. There's a reason that Sherbin Hajipur won that award within, within the Oscars. People realize this, and, and yet the fact that we're seeing this radical Islamofascist ideology sort of ingrained within Western democracies is very concerning, not to us, but it should be very concerning to everyone who lives in Canada, Australia, United States, and in European countries.